2 in the morning. And then he was talking to me, and I was just, like, dying. Like, my head was screaming. I was really tired. My legs were hurting. No, so you, you didn't get much sleep the night before either, right? No, I didn't. Right. And so I kind of woke up with a headache and then, like, was able to, like, shower, listen to music, put on the suit, get myself in that position to not to be feeling good, and then, like, got through the work shift. But then, like, when I got out, it was, uh, like, I had a headache again. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. And then. It's a long day. Wanted to get the lift in. And I just text Julian, like, and I'm not even, I don't even want to, like, ask him, let's go lift. I'm just like, hey, bro, what are you up to? You know? Mm-hmm. Just a feeler. <laughs> just, just a feeler. The lightest feel I could the put The lightest out. of feelers. <laughs> just a caress. <laughs> <laughs> and he just fucking calls me back. And he's like, what's up, bro? Just getting out of work. What are you doing? And I'm like, just getting out of work. Do you have time to work out today? He's like, I didn't. I didn't Didn't get to work out. I haven't worked out in a couple days. I actually really need one. And I was like, ha. <laughs> Uh, what day? Are you, uh, what day are you due for? It's legs. I'm like, oh my god. All right, fine. The call. <laughs> the call. It was Answer like it. every time I was just like, it's like yes, 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 yes. I'll see you there. And I was like, all right, We're on the way. <laughs> on the I'll way. See you in a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Right. Let's go. Let's get a squat rack. I'll meet you at the squat rack. <laughs> yeah. Right. I feel like uh, that's my dog. That's my dog. I appreciate him so much. He's such a great influence. That's fucking lit. Yes, yeah. It's awesome. And then, yeah, didn't miss it. But you didn't eat that whole day? No, I don't think so. Um, I was trying to think if I ate something just like before I left. But the thing was, I just like, no, I know I know, I didn't eat before I left because I got to work and I was like, today's going to kind of suck because I didn't eat anything. I usually make eggs in the morning and then I usually like hummus and salami before I leave or like uh, I'll get a rotisserie chicken. We all have something, you know, so we all have something like our our go-to snacks or like meals, you know? Yeah. We're getting like seasons or... Phases of doing certain types of meals sometimes, and yeah, then we yeah. stop doing it for whatever reason. No, for sure. Yeah, <laughs> I'm really on the hummus kick right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jalapeno hummus, right? Well, it's dying out, but dude, we can get into that. Okay, but let me finish this Julian story. Okay. But yes, jalapeno hummus is the one. If you're gonna buy any one, it just what I realized is that what they make the hummus with must be different hummus to hummus because each hummus flavor tastes and feels like the chickpeas. Yeah, mm-hmm. but it must be like because I guess they emulsify the chickpeas. So I imagine like hummus must be like 50% emulsified chickpea and like 50% the other stuff. But like not literally like comp like weight wise of the ingredients inside the compound. Mm. But like the thing that makes it the flavor of it cuz like garlic hummus and roasted red pepper hummus are not cousins. They're not. They're different families. Really? Yeah. You would think they're very similar. You would think. That's what I th- I mean maybe not, but that's what I thought. Okay. And then like each one is just like really different than the other one. Okay. So jalapeno hummus is like really different than garlic hummus. And I just think it's like S tier, <laughs> like the texture, the way it hits your palate, the aftertaste, um, all of it. The is, finish. The finish. <laughs> Seriously though, like the garlic's not even close. The garlic's like decent. It's like B. And then there's a lot of C's, like a ton of C's, mm-hmm. not even a lot of A's. I don't, there's like nothing. It's like well, B to came S tier. across a couple. Yeah. And I've tried, there's maybe like seven flavors you could try. Okay. Jalapeno's number one, far and away. Damn. Yeah. But yeah, we, we, we all go through those kind of cycles of eating different foods. But we <sighs> need we need, we need need a go-to, you know? It's easy to just fucking go to. You don't have much time. What do you do for a go-to? Right. It's a sandwich. You know what I'm saying? Typically, a, like a turkey sandwich or a peanut butter jelly sandwich or like a peanut butter Nutella sandwich. Dude, I, I almost... Or a chicken salad sandwich. Oh, that's cash. Yeah. Those are all so good. Those are like my top four. <laughs> like, those are my... It's like, there's in there. <laughs> that's S-tier sandwiches. Yeah, they're, they're solid. They, they definitely get the job done. And they're portable. You eat them in the car. It's good to go. That's a life hack. That's a life hack. I don't think you should just gloss over that. That's a big one. That's a big plus. The portability, mobility. Eating your lunch while you're driving somewhere saves you a lunch it saves you like 30 minutes potentially or who knows how long in the in the grand scheme of things right it could be an hour it saves you yeah i um when i'm eating sometimes i'm i get relieved knowing i'm getting to the end of my plate because like my brain i don't know if i don't know if i have some add or maybe like ocd maybe both i don't know or neither but like <laughs> I, I don't want to be doing this anymore so i start to be, i'm like okay i'm about to be able to like throw this away Wash my hands of it, literally. Continue my life. <laughs> yeah, and I'm back on my narrative. Because, <laughs> like, the yeah, pit yeah. stop's kind of annoying. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. And also, sometimes, like, I don't want to take the load off either. You got to, like, kind of let go of everything. Be like, okay, now, now I'm eating lunch. Yeah, it's a, it's a lot. It's a big a big portion of your time. Every, we have to eat every day. I remember whenever I was experimenting with and getting into intermittent fasting, I started to realize how much food, like, kind of dictates your entire daily schedule, you know, 
because mm. I would just not eat for 16 hours at a time. Sometimes I would push it for like 18 to like 20 and just not eat. And just fucking when, when that window came, I would slam everything I could for that window. But to me, the thing about that that's so interesting is I know what it's like to be <clears throat> in a place with your relationship with food and when you eat and what you eat, that that sounds like impossible. It's like bonkers. Mm-hmm. Like there's no way I could like I get so hungry and I crave the food and to just be like excited to push it off. That's bananas. That's like a psychopath. It's crazy behavior. How do you transition from that place where it's like, that's an impossible task, a dreadful chore, to like, you know, you're in the middle of it and engaged with it and you like to do it? I guess you just got to start with what you can do, you know? You, I guess ideally the split for intermittent fasting is 16-8, 16, 16 hours of not eating and 8 hours of a window where in which you could eat your total daily caloric out or whatever uh, input, whatever your allotted calories are per day that you've kind of are experimenting with to see how how your body responds. I remember doing that, just like having, okay, I'm trying to have 3,000 a day, or I'm trying to have 2,800 a day, or whatever it would be. And just, just messing with that. But then just to get all those calories in in that window. But it, it's hard. It's a, it's a long time for sure. So maybe starting with at least the idea of 12 hours. I guess also there was some uh, drinking coffee, because you can have black coffee and you can have like tea. It right. just, it's just calories. The zero calories. Yeah, yeah, zero calories. So sometimes a black coffee would be nice, you know, just to put something in your stomach. It's not water. Just drink a lot of water. But maybe start with 12 hours, 14 hours, work your way up. Try to implement it into your schedule beforehand and see how you want to break your fast and what you're going to eat. Plot everything out. It also really helped because I had a a work schedule that was coincided and allowed that schedule, eating schedule, to, to be all right. I just wouldn't eat at work because I would get to work super early. I, I would be fasting until pretty much I got home. Really? Yeah. Or no, I, maybe I'd break my fast probably around, I guess, what was I doing? Maybe like 11 to 7 or 12 to 8 maybe is where I was breaking my fast. 1 to 9, somewhere around there maybe actually because I would probably just break my fast at work with lunch or whatever we were doing for lunch and head home and then eat. Snacks throughout the day, have dinner, and then be done around 8 or 9 o'clock. And it's not eat until lunch at work the next day. Right. So, so. That, that work schedule really made it kind of easy to implement it into my life in that way. Because okay. like, I couldn't imagine trying to do it on like, on like a server schedule. <clears throat> right. That shit's rough. Yeah. Depending on what your hours are. Well, I had... I don't know. I'd consider doing... You gotta it. want it first and foremost. You gotta fucking want it. There we go. That's it. If you want it bad enough, you'll work it. If you work it, you'll win it. And I agree with you. We shared on a previous podcast about the oatmeal cream pie story. Mm. That was a moment of like, uh, well, I think sometimes maybe if you don't want it bad enough, you have to like hit a rock bottom somewhere or like there has to be like a enough is enough moment. It, yeah, exactly. And so I've been in the place where, you know, you're like, that's just crazy. You know what I'm saying? I, food is food. I got to eat. I literally have to do this. Yeah. I'm sure dieting, I could eat healthier foods. Who couldn't, you know, but mm. Anyways, you can get there. Systematically helps too if you're like, I have a plan. I'm going to eat. Like, I'm going to wake up. I'm going to do this, 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 go to work, eat at my lunch, and then I won't eat again until I get back to lunch or dinner. So, like, I just got to get to dinner. When I get to dinner, then I'll eat. Everything will be good. Mm -hmm. And then I'll go to bed around 10, which is when my window starts. And then all I got to do is just get back to dinner. So, like, if you have a game plan around what sounds like a hard thing, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that helps a lot. Scope out the battlefield. Right. And try to maybe implement the sleep also. It's like, all right, what's my window? I need to try to knock out. I get knock out eight of these hours if I just sleep. Sleep for half of them. So now I'm really only awake, not eating for eight hours. Right. I'm sleeping for eight hours, not eating for eight hours, and then eating for eight hours. So it's not not a crazy, crazy, crazy ask. And I think that the benefits are the benefits are there, bro. I'm sure you can do your own research, whatever. But I've seen, and personally, my own experience as well. It definitely helps. It helps at least, and the very least. Limit the amount of calories you take in, like, day to day. And then also fasting has its own benefits. It has, like, the physical benefits, allowing your body to not be digesting food for a long time. Or because you're, if you're always snacking, then you're always pushing something through your system. But if you just have, like, a system reset, more or less, almost, where there's nothing going on for 16, 18. I've done 24-hour fast before, and, like, I know that there's definitely health benefits associated. and Because in that time, your body's able to discard some of the old damaged cells and biological shit that's going on within your body right at that molecular level or like at that cellular level 
it discards all some of the old shit that's damaged and not working properly, and then it replaces it with fresh new, like recycles, like our like our body does. You know, it just grows new hair, just grows new whatever. Right. And then whenever you're fasted, it allows your body to like do that at a more efficient, more productive level, I guess, naturally. Our bodies just heal itself. They're, they're fucking healing machines. Yeah. I do that when I get sick sometimes. If I get sick, I'll just not eat the fucking day. Really? I'm try to get my body on a reset. Let it do its thing. You know, it knows what to do. I ain't care your immune system. That's it. Dude, I don't think anybody is hardly doing that. It's an interesting theory. And I'm not saying you're wrong at all. I fuck with it. Yeah. <laughs> I think you're right. That's why fasting works, right? I'm I think saying, so. Yeah. I, I think there, def- there are definitely benefits for sure. I know them first. Like, I, I've done it, and then I've seen research about it as well. So, like, subjective and objective. I have things to, like, check both boxes. Yeah. This is true. Or at least for me. Right. But, yeah, you were saying that you fasted for... I, know, <laughs> I guess I was saying also there's, like, the physical benefits I was just talking about. But then also there's, like, I think you there's, you, you get to a wavy place. We definitely were using that terminology back in our mid-20s. Early twenties, talking about getting wavy and feeling like the the walls of reality start to meld with the raw, like walls of spirituality and abstract thought. Right. Those two different places start to collide and mix and mold together. It's like oh, it's getting wavy. So if you don't eat, because I've experienced that as well, going on like a twenty four hour fast. It's like, All right, fuck, I'm just gonna not eat today. Not start eat dinner the night before, finish eating around nine or whatever eight, and then just don't eat until dinner the next day. Just 24 and things straight. And you know, towards the end of the 24, you get a little wavy. Same thing like if you go to, if you don't sleep. If you're like sleep deprived and you fast, like those are two methodologies to experience that like psychedelic state, you know? Yeah. Where it's not or it's like naturally going on in our own bodies. And we can kind of just like get ourselves there. It's wild. What is that I guess I guess it's an endogenous hormone that gets released through those processes. Mm-hmm. I'm not sure. Maybe it <laughs> triggers some of the DMT that's naturally occurring in us. That's what I'm thinking. Right? Something happens, some, something releases, or yeah, some, something, some, some reaction takes place where we get that, like, whoa, what the fuck? <laughs> what is this place? What the hell's happening? Who am I? But yeah, so you, you were kind of there the other day? Or you didn't eat yesterday? Well, maybe that does explain why I felt so wavy, too, actually. <laughs> yeah. Now that we're talking about it, that's going to be tripping. Yeah. Um, yeah, but, you're like sleep deprived. <laughs> yeah, all the <laughs> things. low sleep and then the fasting. Um, I'll get you there. Yeah, it's like whoa. So, this 24 hour fast was like a concept that my boss had brought into my scope because right around the time I was having like stomach issues, he was doing a 24 hour fast just based on a recommendation from a podcast he listened to, Love and it. then he was like, "Yo, you should try this. This might help you." And I was kind of like in that space where I was like, oh, it's like really difficult to do. And it's hard as a server. Cause like, I need some energy here and I'd be so hungry at work by the time. Like if I could get to work without eating, it'd be like starving. And then you see like a crab cake and be like, Oh <laughs> baby, I feel good now. Bubba, I'm back. Charged up. Yeah. It kind of sucks. Whatever. There's such a positive ramification for just eating a little bit of food in that moment. Mm-hmm. Cause like I'm performing every second. So I, I know whenever like, dude, sometimes just literally like one bite of food, you're like, Oh, I feel so much better. Yeah, <laughs> it's crazy, dude. It can do that. Food, food is awesome. Like water takes some time to hydrate you. You know, sleep's like not something you could just grab out of the air and put into you. Yeah, eat it. I'll take it on the go. All <laughs> <laughs> right, but that food it just boom. But anyways, uh-huh. so I kind of neglected to like follow up on this twenty four hour fast, you know, because I don't know. I don't know. I guess I just didn't ultimately think that it would fix my problem, and I wasn't fully committing to it or wanting it or like it's just like yeah, I, might, I might try that later this week or ah, i need to do that i've been saying i'm gonna do that let me see if i can do it to, but not really doing it but then it like mm-hmm. happened to me like i just like accidentally fasted for 24 hours and then i feel different today I'm like i feel like some of that stomach stuff i was dealing with is like not i'm not dealing with it today which is weird yeah right weird body does that bro our bodies are intelligent <laughs> they're like alive you know <laughs> It's preparing itself, growing your shit, pumping. Yeah. It's doing it all for you. We're just sitting in it, observing it. It's nice. Good job, buddy. Thank God. Way to go, buddy. Do your thing. So, yeah, I think there might be some merit to that idea of the 24-hour fast or, like, that's kind of my go-to. To get over being part sick. Part of my sick remedy, yeah. Yeah. At least trying it, you know, just drinking water, getting some good good rest, of course. Just trying to sleep. Just fucking sleep. Yeah. Just sleep and drink water. And that'll... That's, 
always step one. Step one for sure. And then we'll take it from there. I like that. For, I believe in the body's abilities. I'm into it. I think you should try it. If, <clears throat> if you're at a place where you're like, I'd like a remedy for this, and maybe the next step is going to the doctor, but you don't know if you need to go to the doctor for it yet, you could just try to fast for 24 hours and see if that like helps your issue. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Chronic, chronic stomach pain. I also, here's a conspiracy theory we can get into. Okay. I think the last round of COVID transferred from just being uh well initially it was like fuck with well, the first round of covid it gave you the fever and it made it hard to breathe and then it made it like difficult to you can you lose your sense of smell as a symptom yeah yeah and then it kind of evolved into more of a like sinus and like a congestion issue with like a cough attached to it and i don't really think that that cough was really attached to it so much the first time that covid was around um and this is like uh i don't know when i'm thinking about this maybe like a year ago covid I remember everybody getting sick again. And like the, when you were sick at the beginning of working at the previous employer and uh, you couldn't talk because your throat was really destroyed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I thought that might have been a little bit of covid esque symptoms, you know. Mm-hmm. And then now then I think what happened is it went from just like fevers to like a throat sinus thing to like a stomach thing. Because I think a lot of people are having stomach issues around the world in the last like six months. More so than maybe they were in like the past two years. And that could be just like my little tiny slice. It's like, where are you getting this from? (laughs) (laughs) But like, I have just heard of a lot of people having like just stomach problems, like Uh stomach cramps, diarrhea. Okay. I'll just say it loud and loud and proud on the podcast. (laughs) But here's the thing here's why it's a conspiracy. People don't want to go around saying, dude, if I've been having diarrhea for like two weeks, I don't know what to do about it. Mm-hmm. You know? (laughs) And because people have so much shame about talking about their diarrhea. Uh, <laughs> they need to see a professional <laughs> A diarrhea expert Dude, I was having the runs for like a month, dude <laughs> Golly I know, my stomach was destroyed Like explosive? Or dude, here's not the, solid or just Here's the thing It was one or the other It yeah. was stomachs exploding with fireworks and nothing will come out I'm Just sitting there like Please, God, give me some relief <laughs> To like full on Niagara Falls <laughs> Just let it fly Let it rip <laughs> Jiminy Christmas <laughs> Too many Christmas from talking about. This is why it might be worth it to do a 24 hour fast. You know what I'm saying? My help. Yeah. It couldn't hurt. We're, we're talking about what would make it worth it to do this thing. Like I, when I was experiencing that for like 30 days, I was like, yo, something's not right here. Like, not cool. Not cool. I don't know what, what that could have been, you know? But mm-hmm. then I felt like other people were also having stomach issues because when I would be vulnerable enough to talk to people about, man, I'm really struggling with like some stomach issues right now. They'd be like, man, a couple weeks ago, I really like had a bad run of diarrhea, no lie. Like, it was tough. And I just experienced that with so many people that I would be like, <laughs> I think something's going on here. And like, we're not talking about it. Like, it's a we, grand conspiracy. <laughs> it's a mass conspiracy. It's a massive conspiracy. <laughs> <laughs> like, they're poisoning us. Dude, I honestly. We're getting poisoned. I right? thought maybe at the place that we were working at, maybe we got poisoned for a little bit. What? Because like. At also, whose hand? I thought at first, my first conspiracy thought was an angry ex-employee. Oh, wow. Who, who was really displeased with the way that things were going on and the vibe and the 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 culture. And he was counterculture, like a counterculture terrorist. And you know Damn. how like there's someone bombed like Oklahoma because they were like a counterculture nihilistic person. Mm. I felt like that happened with us. But potentially. Potentially. Because also it was weird. Every time I told someone that my stomach, I was like, I'm having stomach problems for like a month. People in authority positions would be like, what's going on? Are you okay? Describe your symptoms. And I'd be like, uh, yeah, you know, feels like I got poisoned. <laughs> <laughs> yes. No, I don't know. But, you know, I, I, I do think that there are some Actual conspira- food poisoning. <laughs> I, think, yeah. I think that there are some conspiracies out there. I don't know if we actually got poisoned. I think I don't think that's an actual conspiracy. It's just something I wondered about for a while. Okay. Because <laughs> it, se- it did seem like... I don't think so. Maybe. I don't think so. I doubt it. Here's the thing is I think that it's um, stress. Stress can uh, present itself as a uh, stomach pain. As a tough shit. <laughs> <laughs> stress personified <laughs> is the runs. That's just what it is. Yeah. It could be like just stomach issues, like oh, uh, mm-hmm. this mm-hmm. right here, uh, anxiety and dread, just cheese, uh, oh cheese, so much so that I think my your brain could give you actual stomach problems. Mm-hmm. 
trying Miyagi. I think it's his small friend. This is his cousin. That that's a mosquito. Just a little skeeter. From what I can tell, we've got two flies and one mosquito going on right now. There's the two flies right there. I see him on the light. Bastards. Sorry about that, guys. <laughs> Bastards. I don't know if I left the door open too long this morning or what, but I left, I threw it open and I left it open thinking you might be walking in because I'd heard your car park. Mm. And then it got like to where it was. I was like, yeah, let me go ahead and close this. But in that time. Bugs are fucking annoying, bro. Fucking Come annoying. <laughs> Who? I guess there are people who, like study bugs. They love bugs. They empathize with the bugs. A bug's life. They love bugs. I love that movie. But fuck bugs. They're annoying as hell. How do you, what do you do? What do you do here? How do you help me? Not help me. Like, I don't need your help. But like, what do you contribute? <laughs> bees. I fuck with bees. I get that. Spiders have a use. Yeah. Because they kill the fucking bugs. Justify <laughs> your existence. Yeah. <laughs> what do you do? Yeah. Some bugs are just annoying. I'm with you. You know? Dude, I, I fight. What, are, what do flies do? How do they benefit anyone? What do you do? How do you, how do you do it? What are you doing? You just fly around touching shit? Nature is a delicate balance. Okay. Maybe shit needs touched to keep the balance. Evidently so. <laughs> it must. It must be a yeah. certain amount of shit touching that needs to go on. It just has to happen. Maybe it's for the, the reincarnation of shitty people. You get to be a shitty reincarnation of a thing that annoys everyone. To literally balance <laughs> out life. Yeah. Just, just to get yours. slapped over and over again. Just soul personify. Yeah, all your... Family just getting crushed, bro. At least it's not that bad. Cockroaches punishment. on the windows and shit. You're only alive for like three weeks, mm -hmm. and you get fucking clapped on. Getting clapped on, bro. But then it's over. Then you can come back as a butterfly or something. Onto right? the next thing, like a blade of grass, maybe like mm -hmm. a, a leaf. Start small, like an acorn. There's <laughs> <laughs> something kind of insignificant Start and small. neutral. Something neutral. Yeah, not a bug. Because bugs, some bugs are annoying. But I guess there are some people who are into that kind of shit. Nobody they likes have a bug pets. Nobody likes like, a cockroach. Nobody, bro. Those are like, Hitler will come back as a cockroach. And the mm -hmm. problem is you have to live as a cockroach forever. They don't die. Mm, until they're in my house. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right? Until they do me to fucking fade it in. But by that time, I'm sure they're happy to go. Bro, I, just, I don't know. I just talking about bugs reminded me of a story about when we were opening this previous employment, the starting to do all the preliminary work and get everything ordered and like situated. Oh, God. Where we is were, this going? No, we were... Uh, before that, we had like a, a run through, like kind of practice investor dinner for like the investors, uh, you know, and we were like working that event more or less, but it was at someone's house. I remember. Yeah, it was cool. But within that event, there was a Seinfeld esque moment that happened where we were just getting everything set up, setting up the glassware, plateware, figuring out like where we're going to have the dishes, food, like well, what the sequence of events is, what's the menu, blah, 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 blah. And then we just see a fucking. It's like a millipede or what, what is a centipede? Fucking just like one of those. It was like a red and like yellow legs. And it was like black and red-ish. You know, like a predominantly black with like a red kind of like pomegranate color hue like faded into it. It looks scary as shit. So with this big ass yellow leg, just like just on the floor. How big was it? We're out there in the country, bro. Out there in the country, boy. Okay. It was like, it was a good foot, foot plus. What the fuck? How, foot plus. How big? Foot and a half. Quarter size? Of course, that's what? Fucking girth? <laughs> How girthy was it? <laughs> yeah, I did. I pulled out. It's a good, it's a, it was a good like half dollar. Good golly. Half dollar to a quarter for sure. That's a country bug. That's a big bug. That ain't baby. no city slicking bug. Mm -mm, mm -mm, that bug's seen some stuff. <laughs> it, was just, it was like frightening. We couldn't, just, I didn't want to step on did it. Did you paralyze for a second? I was, yeah, I was like, oh shit. <gasps> hey, uh. Hey, John, look at this. Uh, look at our friend we got over here. It's like, oh, shit. And then we ended up, it, like, I guess because his, his house on the bottom of the baseboards, there's, I'm not sure exactly what the, what it is design-wise. Maybe it's, like, some sort of thing to sweep trash into or sweep whatever into. I don't know. But he has, like, a little, in his baseboards on the floor, there's, like, a compartment almost, like a door, a doorway. Or, like, the kind of, like, a revolving door almost, it looks like. Or something. But, yeah, just, like, kind of crawled into there. Huh. I was like, well. What? And you you let it live? We couldn't get to it. It was in that bitch. It's like, um, well, it's going to be interesting when he comes back out <laughs> in the middle of this dinner with these investors. I don't think we ever saw it. I don't think it ever came back out from what I, from what I can recall. I wonder if that bug is dangerous. It, it looked like it was. Yeah, right? Mm -hmm, right, like the black and yellow. Some of those are poisonous. I wonder... 
There's a saying. All right, I think that's more in reference to Red snakes. Red and kill a fellow. Yeah. <laughs> Red and black, friend of Jack, or something like that, right? Yellow and black, black and something. <laughs> Red and yellow kill a fellow for sure, I think. Yellow and black, friend of Jack. Yeah, there ain't no red on a safe snake, in my opinion. I could be wrong. And what's that? What's that design? That's crazy. Yeah, I was wondering if... But yeah, it looked poisonous. You know, it looked like you definitely didn't want it on you. Yeah. But maybe that's just me. Maybe that's just me. Dude, when I was going to pose you the question, I was going to be like, was it red and yellow? (laughs) I I almost just... And then I had to be like, translate that thought to a listenable thought and you took it straight back to where i started with it that was weird for me mentally just now <laughs> like just like as a brain but like yeah no because the, there was a question there that you all, you half asked which was like do you think that like there's a design to these dangerous animals like mm-hmm. does nature do that does god do that right to the point where we could like identify it, like matches your you know, the exterior matches the interior or like the in the the capabilities of the potential like a poisonous spider looks like a poisonous spider just like, oh, shit, you don't want to fucking touch that shit. Yeah, like, that understanding shit. what black widows and brown recluses were when I was a kid, I was like, yo, mm-hmm. watch out for that shit. Sometimes yeah. I, I see a spider. I thought. Right. Yeah, I was like, shit, man, people just, like, don't know this. You gotta be careful. <laughs> They're out there. They're gonna get you. Dude, and then when I was in eighth grade, my basketball coach, he had, like, been bitten by a brown recluse, and he had, like, he, he was a black dude, but his, like, maybe... um. 50% of his thigh to like 25% of his leg past his knee was all really, really black oh and like God. a little bit degenerative because he'd been bitten by a brown recluse and it like fucked oh his leg up God. for real. And really out there in the country. That was one of the first times I was ever like, oh shit, that wasn't cap. That yeah. wasn't elementary school bullshit. Fuck, that's scary, bro. Right? Because I remember getting bit or like waking up. It happened to me the other day, but I remember like, I guess, I guess it more so happened or maybe I was noticing it more so in like in middle school maybe and when I was a little bit younger. But I just remember waking up sometimes and having like little bites, you know? Yeah. It's like little spider bites. Yeah. And I was like, oh shit. That's weird. So like yeah, to have that be like a reality that you could fall into. Uh-huh. I was like, oh my gosh. Bugs are terrible. Terrifying. Kill them all. Kill them all. <laughs> Kill them all. Mass destruction. <laughs> yeah. Dude well, I'm you, not here for that. Have you ever met somebody that I don't likes know why. The... I'm sorry. Sorry, bug lovers. I don't disagree with you. Fucking weirdos. <laughs> you seen the people that don't want to kill a bug? I'm that person sometimes. Oh, it was like a ladybug. Okay, but like it's cockroach. Oh no, it's gotta go. Gotta fucking go. Die yeah, in hell. There's a line. It's burn in dead. hell, bitch. <laughs> Wasp nest. Burn in hell. I'm spraying you down in the middle of the night when your children are sleeping. You're getting fucking <laughs> sprayed down, bro. <laughs> no remorse. No, Geneva, no second thought. Geneva Convention for Just a wasp nest. A one, a whole can. I'll waste a whole can on one nest. <laughs> I watch YouTube videos of people wasting a whole can on a nest in a sadistic way. Oh God. Watch them die and be like. Nice, great work. I'm almost there with it, but not not, <laughs> not quite that level. I don't I don't search them out, but I watched one the other I'm day. Mixing my humanity, I'm mixing my humanity with it. But there's definitely a like, it's like, oh no, I had to kill that thing. Like you know what I'm saying? That has that has to be checked. <sighs> it's like I'm I'm killing these fucking bugs. Yeah, I'm sorry, but yeah. I'm fucking doing it <laughs> for sure. Have you ever? Yeah, I guess it was so the the question you were saying was like people who don't kill bugs or like Dude, won't. Yeah, because it's so it's such a weird thing I, that I feel like I had to. You know, my girlfriend was. Are we like, fucked up? Sorry. Maybe. Do you kill the bugs? Yeah, on site. On site. On site. First Squarespace. Of, I'm inside. <laughs> yeah. I'm inside. You're not inside. <laughs> Done. Like, that's it. You don't pay right here, dog. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? This is my domain. Go on over there. Now, outside, I'm less likely to kill. Like, yesterday. Okay, okay. I'm standing okay. with Julian outside my the gym, outside our cars. We break it down for a little bit, chop it up. And a big ass beetle Getting choppy. walks by my foot. To the point where I'm like, it's gross. You know what I'm saying? It's like Ew. big enough, like bigger than half dollar sized. To the point where I'm like, that you, thing's pretty gross. You gotta go. Yeah. You got to go. You're not a you're not a a beetle I could just ride off into the the midst. You're not a in you know insignificant enough that I can let it go. Hmm. But then I realized I'm like, I'm in a fucking parking lot. Got some girth on them. <laughs> <laughs> I pulled that one out of the bag of words. I was like, oh, so I got one here. <laughs> fucking yeah, I was just, in his domain. I'm so bad. Wanted to just stomp that fucking thing, dude. I was walking right by my foot. I just been like, bah, you know, easy kill, easy kill. It probably would have squirted guts everywhere. It would have been gutsy. It's pretty big, <laughs> <laughs> pretty girthy. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, 
I uh, <laughs> I let it live because like I'm outside, so I'm saying that's my Different cowboy situation. code. Yeah, 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 that's the the unwritten code that every man has to live by. Right, everybody has to live by. Like, unfortunately, if I'm eating dinner and I see a bug, I can't really eat my dinner until that thing's dead, or I don't want to. I could, you know. Yeah, yeah. I don't. I don't feel like if, it sucks whenever they're in like the corner and like you can't really get to the bug. And you have to like sit there and watch it and wait for it to kind of move, or you just gotta fucking make the move. Just like, and then if it like crawls behind something and like it's there's, there's no confirmed kill, you're like, oh my god, I'm kind okay. of obsessive with that shit. Right, me too. Yeah. It's like I gotta kill this fucker, bro. I need to see a body. <laughs> yeah, that's a high priority task. Mm-hmm. Everything else is pretty medium priority compared to that. Get rid of it. Get rid of it. Yeah, I'm with you. So Instant. grab a chunkla. Grab a grab a shoe. Bury the thing, dude. Yeah, bury that fucker. Paper towel. Like, just grab it. The paper. Yeah, just fucking savage. Hit it with a bah, and then <laughs> pick up the corpse. I'll go. I'll, I'll do that. At easy money, dude. Just, all day with it. All day, all day with it. Whack a mole. Not really a cockroach though, because that one's got to die with a shoe. I need some distance. I need some separation. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. That's a long you range kill. <laughs> That's a bow and arrow. Yeah. That's a bow and arrow. Yeah, you can't kill that with a melee. Mm. <laughs> need some distance. Yeah, but but I, I'm gonna kill the bug. What's guy. the most effective tool to be killing these bugs with? You think sometimes? Uncle's pretty good, right? It's up there in the power rankings. <laughs> I was thinking sometimes I like would like to try to use a broom to get the extra distance. Yeah, you know, but it's not as effective sometimes. Yeah, you try you right? slap it against the wall a couple times. Yeah, and it's it's scurrying. Like, oh. oh no! <laughs> I like the stomp. Fuck that! The stomp is money. Oh, it's on the floor. I know it's dying. I, I Mario power stomp. <laughs> I double jump. I double jump down. A A down A. Fucking whoop whoop boom. <laughs> Both feet. A full gather and jump and just like bah. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Sorry about it. They cause panic with the women and children. Oh, instantly. Instant panic. Instantly. Like, instantly. irrational panic. My, my fiance is terrified. I guess we're transitioning into a slightly different subject, but of rats. Oh. It's like it's in the same family. Oh. <laughs> this is the worst <laughs> podcast that anyone's ever listened to. I'm oh, sorry. I'm sorry. Oh, poop and bugs and rats. <laughs> Much different than our last podcast. <laughs> God damn it! <laughs> the lost episode. Much more tangible in this one, though. Yeah. Oh my gosh! Yeah, this is a this is a FYI. It's a little redemption pod. We lost a pod through just abnormal paranormal, not paranormal activity, but just abnormal superstitious fucking unexplainable events that occurred. I had the file, went to sleep, woke up, the file was gone. Okay, this is how it goes sometimes. Yeah, like, like it was a great pod. It was a great pod. I guess we, we can talk about some of the stuff we talked about on there. How like kind of incorporate that but yeah sorry about these uh, these, these subjects and these i just realized how images. polarizing the two ideas were yeah sorry oh, you're good. No, yeah, let's, excited. let's turn that down because i think yeah normally i have them on the opposite switchies that's yeah. cool yeah but, no, but i'm uh, getting loud in this one for me. i fucking she's terrified terrified of rats terrified like she's she hurt she was the, <laughs> so i pick her up the other day two days ago whatever it was i pick her up from work and she's just like Babe, I'm, I one of my worst fears happening right now. Like this is the this is terrible. This is terrible news. And I was like, oh my god, like what's happening? You're not like freaking freaking out. So like I'm confused. I'm like juxtaposed between how much I should be like, what's wrong? <laughs> yeah. I was like, what's going on? And she's just like, what do you think? My worst. Like, what do you think I'm talking about? It's <laughs> like, what are we to get? Why are we playing games here? <laughs> yeah. I was like, I literally have no idea. Like, <laughs> please tell me, <laughs> so I can stop freaking out, or I could like yeah. put my anxiety in a box. So like, yeah. what you could be referring to? Like, I'm on ten right now. Something terrible with your family happened, or like, you know, what I'm saying? Yeah, like, that's what I went to what car wreck. Like, something awful just happened, but then she's like, "What's my what's my worst fear in life?" It's like rats. Speaking publicly, <laughs> she's like rats. It's like, yes, you were right. Yeah. <laughs> Newlywed, I was like, ding ding ding! Come Newlywed, on. twenty points. Bang. Let's go. I think you guys can win. Oh yeah, we crushed. We we did a little couples game night a while ago. Oh yeah, at Brandon's. Yeah, that's why I think Murder Squad. Murder the, Squad. Out of the film. So rats, number one answer, easy. And she's like, yes. And I just heard my coworker, or I guess one of their managers, was wrapping up the the training day, finish finishing everything, sending him off. It's like, okay, thank you for doing the service, blah, blah, blah. It was a good training day. We're going to do this and this tomorrow, whatever, blah, blah, blah. Everything went well tonight. The kitchen stepped up, really did a lot better. Everyone's kind of getting into the groove now. Everything went really well, except for the rats. And then she was like brushed by it and she's like, kept on talking to her. I was like, kind of push it to the side. But then uh, I think there was a, another, one of her coworkers was like, not in cahoots, but knew what she was referring to. Then Victoria, or she was asking her like, what's uh, like, what are y'all talking about? Like I heard her say rats. 
Like, you know what she's talking about? Just fucking tell me. Give it to me straight. Tell me, like, fucking tell me right now. <laughs> she's like, yeah, I went to I went to the dry storage area to get some whatever the fuck I was getting and saw a rat. Saw a fucking rat. And then she just, like, was in that energy and emotion in my car because of, of a story of someone else seeing a rat. <laughs> it's a hypothetical story, like a hypothetical <laughs> rat completely. Like it's there, but it's not there. Like didn't see it herself. It's, it's dangerous. It's that, it's that much fear. It's that, it's that, it doesn't even have to be direct. It could be a story of someone else hearing about one in somewhere that you frequent. And you're Petrifying. like, oh no. Oh God, no, I'm never going back there. <laughs> yeah. I need, to, I need to quit jobs. <laughs> it's that level with it. But rats, I have I have a smaller micro version of that with cockroaches. Mm. Fucking hate those things. Yeah, me too. Big time, like fear initiators. Like, oh fuck those oh, things. Oh yeah, are petrifying gross. in the wrong gross. context. Kill those some bitches. Yeah, there used to be, uh, and when I was in high school, in my bathroom at night, occasionally you would find a cockroach mm -hmm. once a month. So when was this? Uh, in high school. Okay. Yeah, at my yeah. house. Yeah, I was like in middle school is when I was seeing a lot of them. Yeah. Yeah, and I would like the worst is getting up because I wouldn't really see them during the day, but at night I'd get up in the middle of the night to go pee. Yep, and then the lights are kind of off, and you just see a fucking cockroach kind of scurry, and you're like, turn on the light in the bathroom, and then you see, <gasps> you're like, fuck, 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 give me a shoe, or you're barefoot, you know what I'm saying? Like I'm vulnerable in my boxers. Yeah, <gasps> dude. Yeah, you don't have no armor on, no weapon, no armor, no weapon, no gear. Oh, low stats. A bladder full of piss. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, plus you're going to freaking... Peeing is a vulnerable thing. You're going to like get yourself real vulnerable around these yeah. fucking bugs. It's like, oh, Yeah, I feel you. Mm. But I definitely also feel like... Uh, yeah, like there's a couple There's a couple moments in my life where I had to do something like real petrifying, you know what I'm saying? And uh, I think it helped me kind of get over that feeling of being petrified. You know what I'm saying? Like some people... Like my mom was the same way. That you were describing Victoria mm. is with rats mm. to like um, spiders. Oh, wow. Okay. Super like irrational fear of spiders. Like to the point where, yeah, she would like see a spider. Borderline phobia. It, for sure phobia. Yeah. Like she openly, like watching the Lord of the Rings movie where there's that the scene giant spiders. with the giant spider. Mm -hmm. Or in Harry Potter with the giant spiders. The Hobbit, I think maybe it was. The, there's a Lord, maybe of, the it was Lord of the Rings too, right? The third one, I think, when they're finally getting to the mountain. There's spiders in that one, right? There's one. Maybe it's the same spiders. What do you mean? Or like, because the Hobbit is just like the Lord of the Rings world, but earlier. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So maybe I'm pretty sure there's spiders in that one too. Okay. Yeah. Maybe it's the same spiders. Either way, giant spiders and shit. Definitely giant spiders rolling around. But then also there's like a, a scene where he's like climbing up Mordor and he's like really close to finally on, on the top of Mordor. And then there's this giant tarantula, like huge 30 foot spider that's like uh, bites Frodo and paralyzes him and he wraps him up in a web and he's gonna like eat him and then sam has to like free frodo mm -hmm. and not be afraid of the spider and fight back and they end up like i don't know if they kill it or how they get away from it they have a sword and <clears throat> they get away but like i remember that heroic shit this ensues <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> uh, my mom just like destroyed by that scene though like yeah. super petrified like i, I can't watch this. i can't like, watch i literally this. can't watch this you know mm -hmm. um in harry potter in the second movie when they go to the giant spider in the woods mm-hmm couldn't look at it like <gasps> for real <laughs> and i always like so then that helped me to conceptualize that that like irrational phobia like you know that you shouldn't be afraid of like a tv screen but like you're literally a, a, immobile like you can't even like do anything Function. with screen yeah. yeah what it, what it, i guess that's coming f that thing is real for some people and also it's coming from a place I think of like ancestral DNA for some reason. Yes, I was. I was just gonna say that, bro. I was just gonna say there's like a. I was. I've been having this inkling in my mind of a thought of. I think I may have mentioned it before to you, but like a TV show or TV series called like The Descendants or fucking and like it's. It'd be cool to have like because you could have multiple different storylines going on all at the same time within the show, but it's like they're different. They're all like a, a lineage of DNA. You know what I'm saying? So it's like you can have like my my story be one of the scenes and I'm one of the main characters and everyone surrounding my cast and my whatever I'm doing and my scenes on the show. But then also you could like go back thousand, ten thousand, fifteen thousand years to whoever I was related to and like their struggle, what they're going through. But like you could like mirror the stories or echo the stories and like have similarities between them and like have reasons and explanations as to why I am the way I am in, in some degrees and facets that I don't understand. You can't explain Yo. it. 
Right. That's gas. That'd be a tight show. That is beyond. That's one of the best shows I've ever heard you pitch. Right. That's, that's a tight crazy, one. Crazy, bro. That'd be tight. You'd have to be making like three shows at once, which would kind of suck. Because if you're gonna have it be like in caveman times or Viking times or you do like a Viking show, but yeah. you gotta have like a regular New York City. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Current day. But like. Dude, you get the right budget. For, I mean, it's fire. Someone should fucking do that. Like, yeah, that'd be tight. We should do it. I mean, it's gonna be Come a on. lot of money, but Come on. Dude. Yeah, K-Man show, have the fucking like medieval times, have a version of me and fucking like working now in like a restaurant or doing whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Playing basketball versus like hunting or something, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like watching your aggression come out of you or like conflict Tribe, happen. Ta- yeah, tribal shit. times and shit. Yeah. Like watching you getting into a dispute nowadays versus a dispute then days. Yeah. That would be group. That would be Dude, there's a lot of shit you yeah, can do. Yeah, the way you handle it, each of the adversity is the same. You know what I'm saying? Or like the, the interactions, the character interactions are the same, or maybe they're a little different, but there's some there's just things that just stay true and across stories across time. Yeah, we could find those. Yeah. And mirror them. Yeah, 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 yeah. Whew. Character development, character arcs, and like lessons learned or lessons not learned or whatever. So if you you're watching saying? and you're from Warner Brothers, contact us. Hit us up. We'll make this happen. Get us in the room. Get us in the room. Movies are a crazy thing because they invest like hundreds of millions of dollars to make a movie. Like, just gambling that it's going to make money in the box office. Right? Yeah. That's a big-ass investment, dude. Like... Big gamble. For real. For a lot of movies, I'm sure. Yeah, and that whole industry is just predicated on it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You just got to hit, hit, the, hit the box office. Make your money back. That's why certain actors are worth so much money, because certain actors demand They'll audience. bring a viewership, yeah, yeah, no matter what. Yeah. It's like, I'll watch this. Will Smith's in it. Exactly. I'll watch this. Denzel's in it. Oh, Denzel's one for us. Yeah, me too. Me and my girlfriend, anything mm-hmm. with Denzel, we're like... I'll watch it with Denzel. Yeah. Who else is like that? Uh, Who else is like that? Will Smith and Denzel for sure. Matt Damon for us for a while was like Matt that. Matt Damon's good. Um, I another, his movies. Another one for us is uh, Samuel L. Jackson. Okay. Not so much when I'm by myself, but when I'm with my girlfriend and we're looking for a movie, we'll watch anything with Samuel L. Jackson. He's They're all great. Mm-hmm. He's amazing. Mm-hmm. He does Morgan Freeman's in good movies. Mm, yeah. I like Jim Carrey, Steve Carell. Jim Carrey. I'm on a Nicolas Cage run right now. Nick Cage. He's, he has, he's mixed reviews. It's he's so mixed funny. reviews. I love it. It's funny going into his mm-hmm. body of work knowing the mixed reviews. Because mm-hmm. I'm like understanding when they're what they're talking about while they're talking about it. I love National Treasure. I know, right? Because the debate started was, uh, is Nicolas Cage a better antagonist or protagonist? That was the debate between me and my girlfriend. Mm. she's like i can't even think of any movies when he's a protagonist like a good guy and i'm like national treasure national treasure first of all first yeah. and foremost national treasure he, he, one of his most goaded pieces of work it's a national treasure it's a, like, <laughs> yeah. no. appropriately named let's go <laughs> yeah come on what are you uh, talking about here gone uh, in 60 seconds oh i didn't even get there great movie Woo! <laughs> it's a great movie i haven't seen that movie in a while i haven't seen that movie since i was a kid but i remember when i was a I kid bet if i watched it now it'd be fucking awesome hopefully hopefully it holds up maybe it's shitty I don't know. No. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> this is the Nicolas Cage uh, conundrum. Yeah. <laughs> oh, shit. Damn it. We, we were in it when we were kids. Didn't even know. No, it might be great, though. My dad liked it when I was a kid. Which makes yeah, me my think uncles did, too. Right? Yeah, yeah. It makes me think we'd like it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, what but else? Fast and Furious doesn't hold up so much. It doesn't. It doesn't. It's a little corny. Yeah. <laughs> and there's fucking a thousand of them. You gotta, you gotta beat that horse to death. Nicolas Cage. Nicolas Cage. Yeah. Now, what, so I know he's a antagonist. I've only seen a couple of movies where he's an antagonist. Go on. Well, do you have any more protagonists? We'll see if you and the viewership can name more protagonist Nick Cage movies. <sighs> I know he's a protagonist in what is it, Ghost Rider or something like that? Or yeah. like a fucking flaming skull head guy Great on a call. motorcycle. I never saw it. I think I'm. I'm pretty sure I saw it, but I, I not memorable. Not memorable. I watch it now just because I'm on the run. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go. What else is Nicolas Cage in? He's in a couple of other movies, but I don't know. I, that, that's pretty much the extent of my Nicolas Cage knowledge is those three movies Mercy said uh, and uh, Kick-Ass I think he's in Kick-Ass he's the antagonist nice he's in a couple other movies though. I she, haven't seen him she said uh, Con Air is one of the movies where he's a good guy and it's a phenomenal movie and he's a really good good guy okay because the question was more was is he good at being a good character or is he better at being a heel the pro- okay, yeah, the antagonist yeah. or a bad guy gotcha um, and then she was like well okay he's a good guy in Con Air and it's a, that's a really good movie but then um then I said, yeah, what's the antagonist side? What would you say? Well, then I said, um, in Face Off, he's a great good guy. I've never seen it. And she's like, no, you fucking dumbass. He's the bad guy in that movie. And I, she didn't say that, but like, she was like, pause. Like, you know, she made it, it was a good point. It's like, incorrect. And I was like, wait a minute, really? And she's like, yeah, have, have you not seen I'm like, I thought I've seen that movie, but like, maybe I haven't seen that movie because like, 
maybe I'm thinking of Con Air. I'm not sure. And then she was like, okay, we'll stop everything because we have to watch that movie at some point because it's like a classic. Face off. And he's an amazing bad guy in that movie. And I was like, okay. And then it started because I started watching a movie called Snake Eyes that I found on Amazon Prime. And all I saw was Nick Cage and a bunch of other good actors. And it was like a late 80s, early 90s movie, I think. And it looked like, like you know, just had that classic feel to it. So I was like, all right, I've never heard of this movie. Let's try it out. Mm-hmm. And we're watching it. And I, it's like not great. But then it's like getting good. And it's this weird, like it felt like maybe it's a cult classic because it's like trying to be a big time movie. and the But the lines are a little cheesy and it's all 90s. And it was like kind of mm-hmm. getting into it. But then it turns out, I I think it turned into like a really good movie because Nicolas Cage is like an asshole, dirty cop that ends up being the protagonist who like wants to do the right thing. And then everybody's like, no, nah, bro, just, just let it slide. You've been letting aside your whole career. Don't, don't let the truth come out. Don't let the truth come out. Like you need to let the conspiracy happen. And he's like, I can't. And then they like beat him and then they offer him money. And, like, do everything that they can do to get him to, like, just take the bribe like he's always done. Mm. And he's like, I, this time I can't. Like, I can't do it. I can't let you kill this person. Like, I can't let... It's not okay. And then he ends up, like, breaking through and being, like, a true protagonist. But nice. it's like the... It was like watching someone, you know what I'm saying? Transition like, or... Yeah. Because he's a cop. He's, like, allegedly a good guy. You know what I'm saying? It's like a dirty cop. It's like... Mm. Yeah. Worst yeah. guy. Cool movie. Great movie. Propelling characterization by Nicolas Cage. Good job, guy. Yeah. And then that's what spun it all, this whole thing into (laughs) into balance. But then after we finished Snake Eyes, I put on Face Off, and holy shit, he's a great bad guy. Really? He made me sick to my stomach, which is like, I mean, as an actor, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's pretty good. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's like you're you're trying to evoke emotion. Right? Mm -hmm. Make me feel something over here. Exactly. And, uh... John Travolta, yep. it's crazy. Another great one. And the movies in Leo, Leo. How do they forget Leo in that motherfucker? I don't know, no, no, no. He's he though. John Travolta's in that movie too. Yeah. On Face Off. Yeah. Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah. yeah. What, what is Leo? I was saying Leonardo DiCaprio is another one of those actors. Oh, that. Evokes or, or if they get him in a movie, he's just like gonna bang. He has, he has viewership. You know. I watch anything with DiCaprio in it. Right. It's fire. If it's he's him. gas. He's gas. He's just gas. DiCaprio and um, who's the other guy? The fucking uh, the guy that. Did the got his body so crazy? He, uh, Christian Bale. Christian Bale. Christian Bale and Leonardo DiCaprio. I think they're on a different level. Okay, they're like S tier. Mm, Brad Pitt solid too. Yeah, so you put him up there. Matt Damon, I think, is in that S tier. Samuel yeah. Jackson, Denzel Washington, those are S tier dudes right there for me. That I'm like Willie Smith. That shit's banging. Will Smith fell out of the cool S tier. The guy who slapped Chris Rock. <laughs> <laughs> He's just A tier now. Joe and Joe and Adam Sandler were talking about that. That's all he is now, or mm, not? Like that's a, that's a heavy association with his person. Yeah, you know? you're like he's got some of the best hits I've ever heard. I'm like, he kind of fell off. He, <laughs> not I fell off. I fell out. <laughs> Just like the meta organization of things, which happens. It's all right. It's all right. I'd love to tell you the plot of Face Off, but like most people probably know it, and I can tell you later. But it's definitely worth watching. Basically, okay. I'll tell you just the little, the slightest bit. Like John Travolta is a good cop, and Nicolas Cage is like a terrorist. And then ultimately, Nicolas Cage becomes like incapacitated, and then John Travolta, to get the information that he needs, is going to take Nicolas Cage's face off, put it on his face. And then they're going to cut his hair and do all this biometric trimming for all of his facial features to make him become the bad guy so that he can infiltrate into the layer of bad guys and get the information that he requires mm. as the bad guy. And he's the only one Disguise. that's been hunting this guy for 10 years. This guy killed his kid. This guy is like his arch nemesis. And he knows him well enough to like go in there and pretend to be him. To act like him. And he's the only one that can do it. And it's the only way they can stop the ultimate bad thing from happening. So reluctantly, our protagonist agrees. And he becomes the bad guy. But then the bad guy wakes up in the laboratory. Without his face. Without his face. And that's a crazy fucking scene to watch Nicolas Cage be faceless terrorist. Faceless man. Insane. He does an amazing job. That's so fucking crazy, bro, because Game of Thrones, there's like a society of people that are the faceless men who literally fucking do that. Like, (laughs) it's awesome. What? It's crazy. 
like they they kill people or they don't kill people. I guess they do kill people, but they also receive bodies and get bodies and then are able to through their connection through their own spirituality. They they were able to learn how to kill these people or when, once they're dead, clean the bodies, take off their faces and then like store them and keep them preserved in this like temple place where they have the all these crazy faces on these giant pillars and then they're able to like, be this person. Be this person out in public doing the fucking thing, doing whatever they got to do, usually assassinating people. And then they just, like, take off their face, and then they're back to their normal whatever. But they just, like, fucking change faces like people change clothes. Whoa. It's and, a, the, and their body changes when they have the face of the other person on through some sort of magic, more or less? Yeah. Whoa. It's crazy. That show sounds nuts. That, that's, like, just, like, a small little sliver. <laughs> that's a small <laughs> sliver. Oh, my, that's delicious. <laughs> Yeah, T minus like sixty days till we start watching that. So. Oh, bro, it's such a that, that's like just one little part of like just such a grand scheme of things. It's fucking wild. But Ooh. that's just crazy that you have or like watch that movie. That's what happens in that movie. Yeah, because Nicolas Cage wakes up faceless, but then ultimately brings his terrorist friends in to make the doctor put Travolta's face on Nicolas Cage. So then Nicolas Cage, who was the bad guy terrorist, now looks like John Travolta, the good guy. And then vice versa as well. And they're still facing off against each other as each other. But then as far as acting goes, now John Travolta is being is... Nicolas Cage in his body. And that shit is nuts, bro. Mm. Like, I was so intrigued by that. And they were crushing. The movie's great. And it's just like, you know, Travolta did a really good job, I guess, because they knew the script and they knew the plot. So he's really one way in the beginning and then really the other way after they switch bodies as far as like attitude and like how he talks to people and the way he treats his daughter. And like it's it's like at some point the bad guy ends up like parenting the daughter a little bit, but like differently. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Then like how he would have done it. And it's like effective in some ways. And it's just a crazy like, uh, I don't know, man. Just playing out of personalities. Yeah. Yeah. It's nuts. Excellent. Excellent movie. So, so good. <sighs> You get that check out. Nicolas Cage. Just as far as the movies go. Yeah. But Classic. Anyway, I wanted to I definitely heard of it. What keep you going with you. What we were talking about about Game of Thrones. Um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, we're talking about sh- just actors. Actors that are Yeah. S tier actors. Watch that shit. Yeah, true. I don't know how we got on just talking about actors. Will Smith slapping <laughs> dude in the face. You know who else I can't really watch anymore? Who? Drizzy Drake. Drizzo. The music don't hit the same. It hit different now. Dude, Kendrick poisoned his discography. It's a big it's a big claim. That's a bold claim. It's just like, ugh. You Every- got hundreds of thousands of people yelling. Yelling that Drizzy's a pedo. Yelling it at the top of their lungs with joy in their hearts. <laughs> and a sparkle in their eye. <laughs> That's kind of fucked up. <laughs> kind of wiggle in their hips, dude. Like celebrities, <laughs> kids, athletes. Like, they not like us. They not like us. Like, oh my gosh. Oh, sorry. Love, love that song. Is that Obama? Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. Let's go. Uh, nice. <laughs> it was like Obama and then one of the guests at our previous employer. Nice. Like mixed together. <laughs> <laughs> I agree with you. I agree with you to the T. I feel like... Uh, yeah, after that, it's just weird because, like, you know, there's a lot of Drake songs that I would like to go listen to. I, I remember how it used to feel to hear that song. Mm-hmm. I'm like, I want that feeling. And I go to bite the fruit, and it's just not even fruit anymore. It's just fucking plastic. It's cake. Okay. <laughs> it's cake. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah. I uh, And that just, man, like, you know, it's weird how that can happen. Right. She, he never should have fought Kendrick. Should have no. let it be, dude. Let it be. You You really fucked it up. Well, then how much is also is, – because if, if Kendrick is just, like, lying about this shit, then, like, that's kind of fucked up, right? Because there's literally negative social ramifications and fan ramifications for what he has done. He should sue him for defamement. Yeah. So maybe he's, the fact that he's not suing him for this slander, this slanderous bullshit. I guess someone would say, you wouldn't shoot him. You wouldn't sue him. You would shoot him. Because to take him to court is kind of a bitch move. Thug it out. Yeah, right. But they ain't done that either. There's dog. some heavy beef going down still. Or who uh who knows the truth of what's going on? Was it all premeditated? I doubt it. I think they've been not not I guess maybe they have been kind of beefing behind. Not like publicly publicly, but maybe subliminally a little bit. 
Def, the over the last seen a ten ton years. Of videos about it. <clears throat> yeah, subliminal beefs. Subtle, so subtle jabs through verses and through whatever else. Yeah, I guess Drake was really butthurt after Kendrick dissed him on Control, hmm. and then Kendrick was like, "Oh man, that's just business talk." You know what I'm saying? It's all love. Yeah, I didn't even like say that you were bad. You know, he was like, "I'm just trying to kill you." Yeah, <laughs> in this rap shit. Yeah. Yeah, no, but then it turned into a whole thing because he was like, "How are you gonna body me on a song and act like you're my friend in public?" And then I'm like, you don't get that trick? You know what I'm saying? Oh, just competition? Like, if we're going. Yeah, out. it's fucking like Kevin Durant and LeBron. You know, yeah. just going head to head. Yeah. It's mutual respect from the spirit of the game. Yeah. Well, they went, I'm trying to win. They went song for song after each other, but I'm telling you. Like, Drake's in a PR nightmare right now. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I guess, what is what is the claim exactly? Okay, pedophilia. All right. All right. What so? What is what is he saying exactly, though? You know, uh, one thing because I think there's levels. One thing is like he was uh, allegedly dating and grooming Millie Bobby Brown when she was like 16, and I uh, was trying to like you know I don't know exactly what grooming is you know but like trying to get her to be down for the lifestyle that he wanted her to be down for to you be know? down from yeah. a young age. Yeah, he's like 15, 16. Okay, yeah, that's young. Yeah, for sure. Or you're saying that there's a different claim? I think there's like, like the, the, the yeah, like the Hollywood or the whoever whoever runs in those those circles. I think there's it gets deep into those circles into that realm of people. It gets sick. I mean, Epstein Island is like a whole allegation. You know what I'm saying? Right. Yeah. A lot of many people, famous celebrity, influential political powers went went to that place on those flight logs. Because mm-hmm. then it's like, yeah, if he's just dating chicks who are like 18, 17, or like 19. It's like bit Leonardo, yeah, Leonardo's like dating 25 year olds. Like he just cuts them off. You know what I'm saying? 25. It's like a similar. What's different? Right. A couple of years. There is like a thing about, there's a thing that we're okay saying. And that's like college girls are hot because they're young. Like, especially trope. guys in their forties or fifties. <clears throat> okay. Playing with that trope. No problem. Mm-hmm. Family guys, no problem playing with that yeah, trope. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. <laughs> they, they, they stay the same age. Yes, they do. Well, yes. Was, he's talking about high school, which is... <laughs> yeah. That's, that's, a, that's a scene from another movie. Yeah, I'm yeah. pretty sure, right? It is, well, yeah. It's then, Matthew McConaughey's breakout movie. That's right? his breakout line. Yeah. That shit the, made Matthew McConaughey. Yeah. And all right, all right, all right. From the same movie. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's based here in Texas. You got any drugs? Yeah, it's supposed Cooler to... if you did. <laughs> 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 Something like that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that that movie's based out of a small town, Texas small yeah, yeah, town. Yeah, what was that? Uh, what, what's it called? I was, I'm trying to, I'm trying, I was trying to grasp it in mid before I got to this sentence. But now I'm talking this sentence. And I don't, I don't have it. So now I'm talking about how I don't have it. You know, it's called the uh, Ridgemont High. Yeah, Fast Times at Ridgemont High. Come on, because that Family Guy episode is called Fast Times at Buddy Cianti High. There we go. And I had to know what the reference was. That was oh. one of my things about Family Guy. Well, if I don't get it, what am I dumb? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I'm just yeah I, I guess I'm just saying that there's uh there's kind of levels to it so like it's like the label pedophile is like whoa that's a that's a big one that's a big old fat I really don't think that there's hampering, like levels dampering. and layers to like but here's here's my point is that yes like y- young yes we allow like younger girls to be hot as a trope because like just like you could say any feature about a woman you could anyone could find attractive like they're tall they're short they're thick they're tiny like there any way you could be like older younger i feel like the dichotomy any kind of like something that make is like defines you could be found attractive to some degree mm-hmm. but like you know i think it's weird i think it's weird that he's like high school girls are hot bro i'm like that's a little weird for me bro that's like weird. that's weird they're not they're also not like on one hand they're they're young but then on the other hand, they're like childlike in their mind. So like they're Immature. too, too, too um, manipulatable. Mm. Like that's not a true relationship. You, you're you not going to. I see what you're saying. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. They're not fully individualized thinkers and. Yeah. Not at all. Life creators. To the point that like the other, that's a boundary. And on the other side of that boundary is something really pure. Like you can't cross that boundary. It's like heinous. Not only am I saying no, I'm saying like you're fucking disgusting. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So, I don't really stop that at like sixteen. I don't. I. I don't think I could qualify like four year old pedophilia worse than sixteen year old pedophilia because mm. it's like it. I guess it is though. Technically, when you're like, is that worth more sin points? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it feels sin like points it. on the board. 
right? Missing the mark is missing the mark. But true, I guess yeah, there was like the the legal age, even like a legal age girl, so like eighteen, what eighteen? I guess it depends on state to state or country to country. I guess in some cases, I'm as pretty well. sure Texas is like seventeen. I thought, yeah, it might be seventeen. Yeah, seventeen in Texas, eighteen other places. Who knows? But like, yeah, seventeen. I was like, oh, I was, that's young. He's legally okay, but it's just like, is is he still like a in the pedophile range? But it's legally okay. Like, no, not in the pedophile range. Okay, not there. We go. Legally, not a pedophile. No, right, not at all. I think that you're, you're who made that you're dating a young girl, which is kind of weird. <laughs> but it is very fucking standards. weird. Yeah, I guess maybe that's what I'm trying to say. Maybe is like is is Kendrick calling what I would just deem very weird, right? Like not or like pedophilia. You should be arrested, right? Because that's like not true. Like legally, if it's like a 17 year old or whatever, just hypothetically. But I right. guess in the in these allegations, you were saying that there was grooming prior to that. Yeah, just waiting to get to that age, which is fucking creepy as shit. Yeah, yeah, still creepy as shit. Still. Waiting to get to that creepier. age in that sense is creepier, yes. Uh-huh. Because if you were just like, nah, man, I'm not talking to her until she's like at least 17 or 18, you know what I'm saying? I've and seen a couple of years. Three years passed, and then you were like, oh, wow, like, yeah, let's, let me take you out. Some shit like that. Like, to, to me, like, yeah, weird. Like, a little weird for sure. But also, I don't know what it's like to be 40. And also, I've heard from other girls that like 20 year old girls like to date 40 year old dudes sometimes. Like, because there's something attractive about it. Or there's some kind of like, you know, Alert. Nuance there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Some nuanced allure about the whatever they think about. Understanding how older. women date across and up. I think women sometimes mm, want to feel okay. that thing. I see what you're saying. That truth in nature that they could actually date this person and get them to treat them nicely. It's like, oh shit. Like I imagine for a woman that's a weird thing to understand about yourself, you know? Yeah, or like a like a sixty and a forty year old. Right. What's really different about that right. compared to a twenty and a thirty year old? Mm. But like 10 years difference the other way, but it gets the maturation age makes it less weird, you know? Yeah, definitely. Definitely. But yeah, Drake's how old? Like 38, 39? Somewhere in that ballpark? Yeah. Somewhere in that ballpark? Dude, at this... Yeah, today a 17 or 18 year old and it's just, I would never do that. But you're not a pedophile, technically. Like legally, I guess. But it's still fucking weird. No. Yeah, I feel you. But uh, yeah, so if Kendrick is saying that that was, that's his claim or maybe that he has other information that we don't have access to. So I'm just saying that might be a little slanderous. Okay, could be a little slanderous if he's just like wrong. It's also just weird like, that fuck. they. What's weird is I would have, if I were Drake, I'd be like, dude, you're a pussy and you're slandering me. Like, you you have to tell lies about me so that you can try to give yourself an edge. But like, that's crazy. Mm. You know, like that would be my defense. It wouldn't be like you're on some whole little weird shit over there that uh supporting a claim that ain't even true. Like some of the outros on those songs it just sounds weird. His rebuttal is weird. It's like. It's like he's avoiding it. He's just trying to avoid the allegation and let it pass, which is like what I just think a guilty person would do. <laughs> but that's just me. The Who Millie, knows, the Millie Bobby bro. Brown stuff is pretty Who well documented too. Like my really? sister told me about Millie Bobby Brown like and three or four years ago. And that is the actress in Stranger Things, right? Right. Mm-hmm. And then also later in, there's a movie that's out right now that's really popular about the, she, Millie Bobby Brown goes into a cave and has to like work her way out. It's called like it's about a uh, it's called like princess or something like that. Okay, damsel. Boom! I'm nasty. Boom! Bang! <laughs> yeah, it's called damsel. It was like one of the number one movies for a little bit there. Okay, and uh, she looks so young in that movie, dude. I was like, that's Millie Bobby Brown. Five years after all that shit, she still looks like a child. Yeah. She's playing like an adolescent girl. And she's only. I don't even know how. If I had to guess, she's probably like 16, 17. because I know that she was. Stranger Things, she was younger for sure. But that was a long time ago. I think, Not a long time, but relatively I think long time she ago. was 15 like five years ago. Okay, like but, 20 now? But that's also when it happened was five years ago. But yeah, probably like 20 now. Mm. But even now, as a 20-year-old, she still looks like a 15-year-old, which makes me feel like <laughs> that's really creepy, Drake. <laughs> extra, know? extra creepy. Right? But she was like a Hollywood starlet. She's also clearly on the path to fame. I guess what was the, docu- like the documentation or what was the evidence or what was, like, uh, what's, right. what was the grooming, you know? I guess just, I don't know, being in proximity and then hanging out. Allegedly, Maybe yeah. Was, Sending creepy texts, hanging out yeah. too much. Childish Getting into the club. Right. Even though she's 15. Right. Having a 15-year-old dance on you. What the fuck? That's fucking creepy. Yeah, dude. That's fucking gross. What I'm saying. It's, it also sounds like... If it's true. Right. Drizzy. And let's let's talk about this spectrum. How about... um. For the people in Hollywood who are doing really disgusting things. Okay. Maybe that's not so disgusting. 
So maybe like that's some kind of like in Drake's mind where he's in this Hollywood world where people are doing P. Diddy like, you know, a lot of really heinous stuff. Mm -hmm. Dating a 15 year old was like the least heinous thing he could do to be still doing something heinous in that culture. To have skin in the game. In there. Something like that, right? That's almost like some plausibility of some way to understand what the fuck happened there. But mm. even so, I'm like, bro, what the fuck? Like, you're one of the best artists in the world. You could run away to Canada and never have to deal with Hollywood if you didn't want to. Yeah, you could go fucking build a fortress. Dude. Live there. Live in a castle. Yeah, you're choosing to do this at this point. Yeah. I would never choose to engage in Hollywood games like that. Like, not worth it. That's what, put, that's what people that. that don't believe in themselves do. They think they have to make a sacrifice because no one can ever really have it on their own. There's no way I could. So I'll do whatever I have to so that I can have fame. It's like, you're you're a non-believer, dude. There's no faith. No faith. No faith. No self-belief. How sad is that, bro? Yeah. You don't even believe. That's one of our big... I guess we were talking about some of the things... Or that this was a redemption podcast for losing the other podcast the other day. And that particular podcast was fucking gas talking about some shit. But one of those things was belief. was one of the corner... Or, Fun, foundational things that we were talking about like your belief system and like influences your thoughts which influence your actions which is like your life and also like your expectation of what you think is going to happen here and your expectation and your beliefs are kind of like hand in hand even though it's like the beginning and the end of your mm -hmm. life experience so yeah some people don't have the, their own self-belief like they don't believe in miracles and they don't believe in treating others as themselves those are like a couple of like a couple of things that maybe like questions that you were to ask people that like you would be able to determine kind of where that person it's like headspace is at. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Do you believe everything happening is for a reason? Or like there's a plan for you? You know what I'm saying? There's, there's a couple. Do you think every sane person would say yes to that thing? Every what? Oh, sane person is what I said, but I guess I'm saying like, you're saying you're hoping that the person would say like, yes, I believe everything happens for a reason. Mm -hmm. Almost like it's the right answer. I'm like, is there going to be people that out there that are smart, intelligent, charismatic, well-balanced people that don't think that's the right answer? Yeah, for sure. Right? For sure. But it is going to impact their their belief about what's going on around them, you know? Yeah. Yeah. But yeah some, some people don't have, don't have their own self-belief. That's uh. that's the part where I'm like, what are you even doing here? Like, what's the point of your autonomy if you don't believe in yourself, you know? And I guess, I guess if you just feel like, you know, you're a fuck up and you let everybody down all the time and you don't want to take the last shot in the game because you won't make it. I'm like, I don't know, bro. Be grinding in that motherfucking gym. And that yeah. metaphor, whatever it is that you're not good enough at, that is your, defines you. Can you get better at it? You know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. That sucks. Fuck that. Yeah, I don't even know what that's like. And yeah, it creates a crazy reality that yeah, I can't even imagine. No, I won't let myself imagine no, it. Fuck no, fuck no. I'm you, like, get it out of my matrix, bro. I'm done with that. <laughs> shit. Goodbye. <laughs> On to the next subject. <laughs> yeah, we'll talk. We were talking about some crazy shit though, but yeah, we think that, or I think that you, you're. Because I guess we got to those. We, that was like where we ended. We ended with the beliefs, the thoughts, the actions, and then the expectation and those things that kind of create what the fuck's going on here. Because I guess all of that was predicated on the idea of us talking about cliches about life is what you make it, like thoughts create reality, that type of shit. So I think that there is definitely is something there. So like if you don't have that self belief and the expectation is going to be that things are going to turn out negatively because of what your self belief is then like this is going to be fulfilling and like you'll justify that and that's what you'll create kind of you know it takes a crazy person or it takes a, a a somewhat delusional amount of faith and yeah it's like craziness to think that you can change something that's not currently happening or to think like okay like i know what the results are you have your expectation but it's like in order to, you have to like change your expectation and change your belief and in order to do that, it's fucking, it's crazy. You have to be a little bit crazy. You have to be willing to be a little bit crazy because you're literally going in complete contrast with what is actually happening, the isness of the of the now. And you're like, no, fuck what is this. I I accept it, but like, fuck this. This is no more. Like, I, I'm going to, whatever, I'm going to change this shit in some whatever way you're going to change it. Yeah. And so it, it takes a lot to get to that fucking, that flip if you don't have the, the self-belief. But you need that to have a chance, bro. You need that to even have a fucking chance out here. Yeah. Otherwise, you're just going to be just coasting, right. coasting to death, leading a life of a quiet desperation. Going with the river. As the quote them. says. Yeah. Yeah, I agree with you. You always end up going with the flow. You'll never have the chaos to go against the flow. Mm -hmm. I mean, sometimes it's just like a pure cry out. Like it's like I desperation can get rid of the need for self-belief. 
Like, I don't believe I can get that job. It's like, I need that job. I'm getting that fucking job. They don't need a lot of stuff. Desperate. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. The necessity. Yeah. Create necessity and urgency. Oh. It's like, do it now. Do it now. Do it now. That's good. That's good. You don't want to always have to be desperate to make a play. You don't want to be able to make a play just in a normal state. Mm. Plays would hit more often if you were in a normal state. Yeah. Yeah, man. I think yeah, having a couple of those questions of like, do you believe everything happens for a reason? Like your, your self-belief. Would you or do you agree with the sentiment of like treating someone as your neighbor? I guess just trying to be even in that sense, you know, not trying to fucking fuck anybody over or hurt anyone unnecessarily. Sometimes you have to hurt somebody, but if like if it's true or if it's going to be beneficial in the long run or they're going to it's going to be like a coaching or a learning moment, then like you have to hurt them in that moment to do a better overall good. But no one's, I guess not no one, but we're talking about that too. <laughs> Potential, the amount of people who are in that percentage, like who are fucking people up, narcissists and psychopaths who are actually out there. It's like, fuck, that's scary, bro. They're like brown recluses. They're fucking black widows. Like they're, they're fucking out there. Yeah, that's like, that's like definitely up to 2% <clears throat> of the population. But then up to 10% of the population is just like hyper disagreeable conflict. Yeah, doesn't agree with any of those sentiments. It's like, there's no fucking... There's no plan for any of this shit. What I do here doesn't matter. I could treat anyone instrumentally and do what I want to get what I want. Give a fuck. Dude, also... Try like, to feel good in the moment. When you ask those questions, man, there's other questions. Like, who who does that person think that they are? Mm. Who do they think that I want them to be? And then, who does that person want me to think of them in my own mind? Not only, like, the perception of what I'll actually think, but what do they want me to think of them? So, like, all of that plays into what they'll say about themselves. Mm-hmm. Like, the the decision to be vulnerable and honest to that question, and then on top of that, to actually be aware enough to know your character and have a belief system and then express that belief system in that vulnerable and honest way. But I don't, I don't know how many, like, what the percentages of people that can communicate like that. Mm. Some people are so worried about, you know, being the, the right person in a conversation or sound, sounding smart in every conversation that they're at. Just so that they don't ever have to be someone's fool, especially like in a workplace. Sometimes it's like just being honest. It's like, no, I got to say something that sounds boss right here. You know, like that's not me per se, but I think that that happens a lot with like, uh, like jockeying and like posturing, you know? Yeah. Or trying to have others uh, respect your authority or give it validation. Right. Something. So I'm yeah. the boss. Like, listen to the boss. All right. Because I, I agree that it would be awesome to have that on our, like, uh, if we're going to hire somebody, like, would you mind filling out this question, Air Force? Yeah. <laughs> and just, like, getting honest response. Uh-huh. Another thing is, I think it would be beneficial for a job to determine what your love language is. It's like, tell me what your love language is so I can know how to, like, have a relationship with you. Because if, like, I'm really good at words of endearment or whatever it is. So, like, if I appreciate you, I can communicate that I appreciate you. And if that's how you feel loved, then that's going to like be enough, you know, like you're going to be a happy person. But if you have a different love language, if it's like gifts or something like that, and I don't know that, and I'm never like trying to go out of my way, like, Hey, I got a $20 Starbucks free card this week. You've been doing great work. I really appreciate you a lot. Like that's going to hit for that person 20 times more than anything I could ever say. And then it's like, I can meet the needs of my employees much better if I knew specifically what would help them like vibe, you know? Mm -hmm. But then I was like, does it, do you guys know like, like if I'm interviewing 10 people, how many of those people know what their love language is? Not only do they know what it is, but then they actually know what theirs is. And they're not going to lie to me to do like it's some kind of test. Like, hmm, which one, which one means a lot to you? Which one's the right answer? <laughs> yeah, right. It's like, <laughs> what do you want me to be? <laughs> <laughs> That's not going to help us here. It's the, the truth, please. The truth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You need to have, you have your own thing. You have your own fucking thing. People are living in the perception of the perception. Remember, that was a big cornerstone. Yeah. Fuck it's hard that. to break through. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It takes everything. It's going to take everything in your being to do it. Yeah. All your mental fortitude. To just express yourself purely. To fucking, yeah, to try, try to be the truest expression, not to lie to yourself, first and foremost, and then to anyone else. Yeah. At least to the best of your ability, you yeah. know. Even on accident. Or yeah. like, sometimes it's just like, you just don't know. You think it's a little white lie sometimes, and you're just like accidentally saying something, and it just like sounded good on accident, like it. You ever like, the jump was 10 feet and I'm about to tell them it's 10 feet. I'm telling them it's 10 feet. I actually said 14 feet and they <laughs> loved it. 
So I'm just going to leave that there. <laughs> I'm going to correct myself at this point. It's going to fuck up my flow. Uh-huh. And like, that's just like happened to me sometimes. And yeah. then I make a mental note. I'm like, why did you exaggerate there to embellish what you were saying? So you would think that they, you were cooler than what really happened. Mm. You fucking lame lying idiot <laughs> douchebag disingenuous douche alert yeah i call myself out like that because it's you know because it starts off on little accidents oh yeah i'm, I'm trying to get my accounting degree oh uh, yeah i'm gonna finish up soon it's like what the fuck no you're not why are you telling that person this and mm-hmm. then I, I just don't want to ever like tell my boss like you know i'd rather be like i was late because i fucking mismanaged my time i don't ever want to be like traffic was really bad and then one time it's like why really oh uh, traffic and then he's like there's no traffic on the road, bro. Like you're just a fucking liar. You know what I'm saying? That's a hard boss. Is gonna check the traffic. Uh huh. Let me see about this traffic you're talking about. This traffic you speak of. I guess, <laughs> I guess what I'm saying is like uh, telling a white lie to cover yourself up, but then like having that instantly be revealed as a white lie. Just like you lose such credibility and respect. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Or it's like that becomes also like a your. It's a habit. It becomes a habit at that point. And by habit, I guess I more so am saying it's, it's it almost becomes a response instead. It doesn't even be, I guess a habit and a response is almost similar in in some aspects. But it could be like, because I don't know. I remember in particular, there was one employee that we used to work with. And I think I would ask, I, I don't even know. I was like, I would ask, I was like, oh, did you do this? Or is like, could, could you do this? Or say, I, I would Inquire about doing something about getting the restaurant open. It's like, all right, let's get this shit open. Blah, 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 blah. We're doing it. And then we're to ask her, like, oh, would you, did, or did you do this? Or have you done this? Or why isn't this done? I think that that's usually more so. It's like, why isn't this done? Or like, have you had time to get this, get to this yet? And then I know there was a couple times, because we worked together over the span of a month or two. So multiple, not a whole bunch, but a handful, five plus interactions of just like us doing this thing. And like, I've noticed a couple, maybe two or three of those five interactions where I would ask something and then I would know that the response I would get was like a lie. It was just like an instant lie. Really? It's like a white lie. It's like, oh yeah, I, I did that. And I was just like, I was like, oh, did you? Because I think I'm, oh, okay. One that came to mind right now for sure, for sure, for sure. The most recent one. It was, I was like, oh, could you get some to-go bags and to-go boxes and then go about doing things. Do, 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 do. Time passes, 30 minutes pass. Go back down, check in the same area, look down and there's no, like, there's some in there, but it's like a, a very, 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 very small amount. And I was like, you didn't put any in here, like in here. And I was like, hey, did you have time to fill these up with to-go boxes and, and stuff? She's like, oh, yeah, I did. Or like, something like that. I was like, if you did, then you only put like five in there. Like, like maybe you did put five in there. Yeah. But like, if you're going to put any in there, like fill it up. Right. So I was like, why? Instant lie. Maybe it's just like a habit or a response yeah. that's built into something, into something, into the perception of the perception. You know what I'm saying? It's like double speak. Because maybe she wants you to know that she's going to do it, but she wants to say she did it so she can say she did it. But it's like... It's taken care of. Yeah, right? Yeah, <laughs> right? like saying that. Don't worry about it. Yeah. I got that handled. Yeah. Yeah. I'll handle it. Under control. Yeah. <laughs> it's better than saying, I didn't do that thing. You're right. You're like, oh, dang, I forgot. Yeah, exactly. You, know you can just like take what would be credit from you, like uh, positive reinforcement from you, even though it's not deserved. Yeah. And that shit's got to die. You got to kill that thing. I think you might get there accidentally by telling those little white lies and not like at least logging it in your mind. Yes. Of like, hey, why'd I do that? Like, watch, watch out for that in the future. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Then don't be doing that all the time. I agree. Because then it could lead to that. And it's just like, that's not good. Yep. It's just like a, yep. it's a quick little boop. It's like, why? Not cool. I'm not even like a mean boss. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. I'm not, not going to like blow up on you. Never. Like, Okay. Could you? Like, could you spill it up, please? Yeah. Like, okay. Yeah. Is it so? Gotta be careful. Gotta be careful out here. Do your best. It helps a lot. It helps just clear your vision. It helps you. You have a better sense for the truth because you're telling the truth all the time. So you have a better sense of like when someone's being honest with you. What's happening? What's yeah. actually happening in a situation? Right. That awareness mm-hmm. just rises up because there's less distractions. It's less blurry. Yeah. When like truth, like, trying to be truth detent, like detectives or like monitors. It's, like, yeah. I can feel it. This this is more true. I, I could like maybe see intentions. You know. Yeah. It got to a point where I felt like I, I could do that. I could I could sense when people are capping just because I could feel like intention. Plus... Opportunity for lie. Yeah. Exactly. And it got to a point opportunity where opportunity to manip- to manipulate my perception. Yes. It got eerie. In fact, to where I was like, it smells like that smells like a lie. <laughs> I could smell the cap. 
Uh-huh. And then Joe Rogan described that he feels like he can sense when someone is being manipulative or lying to him or ill-intentioned. And he said it, it hits him in his nose, too. He's mm-hmm. like, it feels like I can smell it. Like, I know that's not what's happening. I think it's like pattern recognition that's like cueing me into like a hunch. But I feel like it happens in my nose. I was just like, bro, I know exactly what that's like. Hmm. It's weird. I could smell your bullshit. And I then could smell it. Him and Huberman were saying that there is potential for people to give off like micro... Like liar, horror. Yeah, stress and anxiety for sure. Ooh. Like the way you would perspirate if you're like yeah. stressed. Nervous. You know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So then if there's a nervousness to being dishonest at all, then you would exhibit. It'd be perceptible. Exactly. And I mean, we're getting into a whole thing right here because okay. some people think that you can like read people by just looking at their face and their body posture and their gesture and the tone of voice. You can discern if someone's lying to you or not. Body language. My thing is that you can always, you can almost always discern if someone's having anxiety. There's natural state, then there's anxiety versions of people. And just because you can discern, maybe someone has like a nervous tick. It's like you see me being nervous and you think like, maybe he's a dishonest person. Maybe I'm just like having anxiety, you know? Mm-hmm. And, and to claim what that anxiety is based on, you you could never. I get any, Some people get anxious going to a second story of a building. Like that's yeah. not being them being dishonest. They're just a little afraid of heights. Mm-hmm. So like... The best thing to do would be to befriend that person and ease their anxiety because that's what's going to allow their truth to come out. But if you become like uh, Eye of Sauron and you're like, I see it. I see you're fucking tick. fixated on it. I know you're not being honest and genuine with me. It's like that's going to make that person have even more anxiety, which would create like a negative feedback loop of like, he really is dishonest. Yeah. Oh, He's a witch. Yeah. He's a witch. A witch. <laughs> Burn him at the stake. Exactly. Right. And that's, yeah. um, I think that's why you can't, you can't tell yourself you can read people truly. You may be able to pick up something and you might have the, I think if you have the intuition to not be trying to find out when people were lying, when someone is lying to you, that one just kind of hits you more like, I think that's cat bro. You know? Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah, there's something there. That's crazy that there could, there could be legitimate scientific evidence to suggest there's an odor or some sort of perceptible give off that happens that we're able to be like, ah, I can feel your line. Yeah, he but would, also I guess you you can kind of just per- see opportunities for someone to to manipulate your perception. Mm. You know, how do you mean? If you're able to, I guess able to kind of just see like if you when you ask people questions, like definitely if you're doing an interview, you know, right? Like you're. I'm building my perception literally off your answers. Right. You know, so, but I I could dig and I could ask different kind of questions. I could be like very skeptical skeptical about what you say, but you're you have the opportunity to lie a whole bunch in an interview. Oh yeah. <laughs> and a lot of people do. I'm sure. Embellish oh, yeah. everything. <laughs> definitely. Definitely. Oh, yeah, the go-to guy over there. Go-to guy. <laughs> the go-to guy. Not not the to go guy. I'm the go-to guy. <laughs> yeah. You work to go. Sure. <laughs> You were the go-to guy for the to-go. He wasn't even the best guy in to-go. Actually, <laughs> he was just kind of. He didn't like, even work there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right, dude. That's that's happens all the time. People really? lying on your resume is like a mm-hmm. classic thing. Mm-hmm. It's like probably fifty percent. Oh, I've lied for a job interview one time, and it was to be a server. Oh yeah, my dad was like, "I embellished." We didn't lie. I lied. We didn't, no, you didn't. Okay, I embellished. <laughs> I embellished. Sure. Embellished. What was, what was your embellishment? Because uh, I definitely had restaurant experience. I have worked in a restaurant before. Facts. Really? That restaurant experience <laughs> prior to the Riverwalk in San Antonio was helping my mom at Marie Callender's during the holiday season, particularly Thanksgiving, because they get slammed because they sell a lot of pies. And I was boxing a lot of pies and organizing a lot of boxed pies. <laughs> In a restaurant. That's tight. That's restaurant hours. experience. That's restaurant experience. Fuck yeah. That's restaurant experience. Go to guy. I was go to was go to to go guy. <laughs> <laughs> that was based on a true story. Yeah, come on. <laughs> yeah, no, I I told them never served a table in the day of my life. <laughs> never taken an order. Never served drinks. None of that shit. But I had restaurant experience. Sure. Yeah, you did. Didn't lie. If if they never asked you what you did and you never <laughs> you never had to tell them about shelving pies. I told them I helped at my mom's restaurant. Nice. Not a lie. <laughs> not a lie. That's a crafty not a lie. It gets – Game of Thrones is like that. Or like it just – it highlights that truth of like the 
the game of talking or like narrative really yeah the narrative. thing is is a lie of omission is a lie oh 100 percent. yeah 100 <laughs> percent. i knew what i was doing yeah. i knew what they wanted i knew i didn't have it <laughs> i needed it any- <laughs> i needed it anyway Okay, that's God working. That's God working. God like now I got my fiance. Oh, hey, <laughs> who? We, what are we talking about? And now what are we talking about? What are we talking what about? What are we talking about? <laughs> that's a nuanced, that's straight of thought right there. We're out here. Damn, hey, I don't, you got a baby girl coming. I don't even know what to think about that, bro. Didn't lie. <laughs> I lied. <laughs> oh, what'd you say? I told them that in high school there was a guy who owned a Mexican restaurant that was a big fan of the football team. Not a lie. Not a lie. <laughs> Not a lie. We're good so far. And that that uh, he was um, such a big fan of the football team that I played on that uh, he would allow me to come into the restaurant and wait tables like once or twice a week just whenever I had some free time. Need some extra money. Yeah, I could call him up and say, hey, can I work tonight? And it was like, it sat like 10 or 20 people, which is a really chill Mexican place. Um, yeah, I can, ta- I can take orders. I can get drinks. I can provide food. Like, I haven't done anything like this, but I was a... Uh, Big time athlete, played a bunch of sports, had a lot of pressure situations. I know how to work hard, know how to be on a team. Um, anything I put my mind to, I, I find a way to be successful. I promise I'll do that for you. And he was like, "We usually don't hire people that don't really have experience, but um, I don't know. Let's just do it. Fuck it. You'll be all right. Let's go. Yeah. And I was like, Woo, got a job. Let's go. Well, let's go. We're paying rent. Homeless man experience. Homeless man experience. We're in there. That was a lie, by the way. <laughs> I have never, I used to go eat at Mono's. I, I, I ate at a Mexican restaurant for sure. Plenty. Yeah. Plenty of time. Once or twice a week, yeah. I would come in and see the guy who loved the football players. And uh, I bet if I asked him to work there, you know, he probably would have let me. <laughs> there we go. Yeah. There we go. Not a, sure. lie. Not a lie. Potentially. There was a lot. Of, see, what makes a great lie is you surround him with truth. Oh, yeah. You got you to gotta cushion that. Keep yourself as normal, like as truth-based as you can. So that way your lie isn't like... Completely out of left field. You're just imagining a world that doesn't exist. Mm -hmm. I don't want to teach you guys how to lie or anything like that, but (laughs) I think it's funny that one of the only ways a lie will pass is if it's padded with truth because it's like so polarizing. You got to smuggle it in, you know? Yeah, 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 yeah. We are. We could. I guess maybe maybe that points to the the fact that we can like detect truth and like we have to smuggle in the lie sometimes. Yeah. You know. Yeah. We're truth detecting machines. True. Feeling machines. We have this feeling process going on here. All our five senses plus our sixth sense. Yeah. I just want to say that's not something I really gathered from my life per se. I didn't realize like after a ton of lying, the <laughs> best way to lie is to pat it. I saw it in a movie somewhere. It was in a movie that was like. That's in uh, Your Honor too. Really? Yeah. When he's like helping him create his alibi. Yeah. He's like, we have to actually like, let's actually go do all that shit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That was not like validating for that thought, but I was like, oh yeah, like. I have like a presupposition notion that supports this thing that he's talking about. And I think it makes sense. Like he has to tell the story over and over and over again to like implant an actual like thing to recall would get rid of, if you were to take a polygraph and he's like, yeah, we went to the cemetery and you like went to the cemetery. There's no skip in the heartbeat. Cause you're just like, you're not imagining you're recalling. Mm-hmm. And that's a big difference in your brain waves and the way you're going to talk and the way your eyes look inflection points recalling is a different thing than imagining mm. most of the time people say when you recall you look down and when you imagine you look up maybe we oh okay yeah you, uh, what happened there uh, you're looking into the ah uh, into the into the abstract thought realm yeah it's like oh where is it where is it in my thought cabinets i learned all this when i was a kid i i you know i don't i don't remember when i got fascinated or if my dad was telling me about all this but the problem is there's times where I know I'm recalling it. Like, I know. You know what I'm saying? It's my fucking life. You know what I'm saying? Mm. And I know I'm recalling something, but my face goes up a little bit. I'm like, oh, when was that? When I was that? that? When was that? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So you can't use these fucking textbook guidelines. Yeah, Criminal not- Minds. That's why. I love that show. We love that show. I love that show. That show had it in my head that you could fucking read people and profile people and understand all this shit about them based on behaviors and shit, you know? Uh-huh. But it's like... There's some truth to it, but there's no definitive by the book, textbook. This is how it goes. This is how it goes. There's a lot of variability and randomness and chaos. It's that like goes trying into... to define intuition. It's like you mm-hmm, can't. Mm-hmm. It just. And I think you're you're trying to find science for the the gut feeling. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Even then, I think we were, I think we did. I think there's a I don't know scientific research backing that idea. That there's like an energy center or like a like another brain almost. And like your, in gut. your gut, yeah, yeah, that has thoughts and has feelings and has expressive qualities. Fascinating, crazy. That's just real. Yeah. Hard to hard to grasp, 
But yeah, we're all just such crazy combinations of everything, expressing what the hell we're trying to do. It's it's overwhelming. It's honestly, it's overwhelming, y'all. Yeah. If you really think about it, it truly is. It's overwhelming how deep this shit gets. We get out there. So far out there, dude. Out there. Yeah, bro. I, uh, what, 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 how, do we, how do we get on to all this? Or even talking I was about? really just trying to get us away from what would be one of the worst podcasts in the world. Rats, cockroaches, and diarrhea. Pedophilia and lying. <laughs> Pedophilia. <laughs> Yeah, we are, we're talking about some gross shit, y'all. Sorry. I, I had to do a mental jujitsu moment while I was talking to you because I'm like, dude, this is horrible. We're bombing. Like, Jesus <laughs> Christ. This is bad. Sorry, guys. But I also think, Sorry, like, y'all. yeah, if we had an investor, it'd be like, let me just check out a, an episode. Let me, see, let me see the most recent episode. Oh, my God. Not this one. <laughs> Don't watch that one. <laughs> this one. Especially because of how polar opposite the other episode was. Yeah. So uplifting. So I was speaking in Canadian. Like, what? <laughs> I was just so tapped into Jordan Peterson energy. Oh yeah, it's just like so sophisticated. My word choice was all. My leg cross was different. Yeah, it was yeah. all different. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> leg cross hitting different. Like I was embodying a different energy. Yeah, we were on a different energy last time. I can't control what animates me or what I'm influenced by. What what is inspiring these conversations? I think that they're alien ideas and energy forms just being. Talk about this. There's truth in this. There's real in this. Like. Mm-hmm. If we can't talk about something, then we're we're fucked up. Mm. I want to be open enough to find the truth in everything, to find the comedy in everything, to find the like. When we're talking about like, what's the difference between sixteen and four year old pedophilia? Mm-hmm. That question, a lot. No news broadcasters answering that question. <laughs> no one's talking about that shit on CNN. No fuck no, dude. No one. That's just a you're, you're gonna crucify yourself, you know. Uh-huh. But I think that to be afraid of just talking about anything, to understand the nuance of it, to like parse it out and say do we really feel a certain way about some like how, how is it that we think about this shit that's yeah. like a superpower of ours trying to find the truth i think it requires an, a certain amount of openness which is a personality trait to be willing to talk about anything you know yeah but yeah. uh yeah i'm proud of us for not shying away there we kept digging in just kept going looking. just you got, got just the way the things these things bridge together yeah this is just so a, random sometimes. a weird run it's like it's weird a run. weird run <laughs> It happens. We said the devils might have taken away the last podcast. Unexplainable things. I had the file. It wasn't the whole file, but I had the I had the project on Pro Tools. It was fine. In the nighttime, editing it, lining everything up, got the intro, cut the beginning, boom, lined it up, got the outro. Okay, we're good to go. Try to export it, but I only exported like an hour and a half, and it was like almost two hours. So I was like, oh, shit, I need to slide this thing over to export the whole thing. Did or did the hour and a half one on accident, the night on the night. Woke up that next morning, didn't even close the program, still open. Realized it was only an hour and a half instead of the whole two hours. I was like, okay, let me just export it again. Tried to export it again, fucking nothing. It's like what? What the? I didn't even. Nothing changed. Nothing changed. Nothing changed. Literally zero zero things changed. Like maybe the program froze while it wasn't saved or something like that. Something. That I am unable to explain happened for sure. I'm sure there's a reason for it. I know there's a reason for it. I'm not sure what the explanation of that is or how and why we lost that pod. It was great. But yeah, potentially the devil took it from us. <laughs> That's why I classify it. We just lost it to, to the ether. It goes. To adversity. Yeah, to the adversity. The adversity that is just inevitable. Inevitable yeah. shitty thing happens. We really witnessed a lot on that podcast. It was a lot about scripture, God faith belief belief yeah. systems i mean dude that was honestly one of our best podcasts ever so to have it taken from us and then to get on here and talk about <laughs> you know the, some, some gross shit l- literally everything that makes a comic dirty mm-hmm. that, that's dirty comedy for you morally i mean that's it and not squeaky clean at all but i don't know it's a weird thing but also i feel good pushing being willing to pursue truth through any co- subject that comes up just yeah. finding the lulls with you and, and yeah. cooking with it, not being afraid. And yeah. then also... S- super stream of consciousness. Yeah, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's thought of that. Oh, yeah, if you ask me personally, I praise God. You know what I'm saying? I'm Absolutely. trying to do the right thing. Praise God. I feel like uh, you can't... There's nothing... There's no, there's no judgment to be had. You know what I'm saying? So I feel like free enough to just be me, you know? That's what I'm about. Yeah. That's what I'm about. That's what we choose to be about. Oh, yeah. Fuck yeah, bro. Let's uh let's wind her down. We're gonna head over to the office. 
we're gonna get this shit popping hopefully get it furnished and decorated in the next week hopefully sooner than that look at this shit rolling Got a client already, MG38 Productions. We're going out with a bang. I want a bang. This is going to be also part of episode number two of the MG38 vlog series that's coming out. We're going to be doc documenting this journey of entrepreneurship, business startup, the whole fucking thing. It's going to be tight. It's going to be tight. So be on the lookout for that too. Yeah. More content, more streamlined. We're here for you. Yeah. We're trying to increase the podcast production. Trying to maybe go twice a week, maybe three times a week, depending on if we can get the guests, and then also our upload capacities. Maybe get one on Patreon or something, like an exclusive pod on Patreon. Oh, and real quick, I want to shout out. Hold on, we had a... Oh, I saw I this. Email. Yeah. Dude, I'm tripping. We got a fucking subscriber, bro. Buzzsprout subscription. Fucking $10 a month, bro. We got our first sub, bro. We got a sub. We're making money. That almost pays for the Buzzsprout subscription. Yeah. Rhonda Trevino at Yahoo.com. Rhonda. You're a savage. Out. We love you. Thank Let's you. go. We at, appreciate you. At some point during your day, you stopped and you were like, where can I contribute to this? And you must have done some research because I don't even know. I didn't even know we had Buzzsprout subscriptions. Yeah. And you found that and you committed. That means so much to me. Thank you. Yes. Maybe we'll do that as well. Or like in, in tandem with the Patreon podcast. We'll have a Patreon and a subscription only podcast. Yeah. That comes out once a week. Yeah. And then we have two other regular podcasts where we try to get guests on twice a week. That's awesome. So we have three podcasts a week. One of them is exclusive to members only and on Patreon. Yeah. Just as an extra, just an extra way to support us, you know, yeah. some extra value for you. If you want us to talk about anything, I think DM, comment, whatever. We got you, Rhonda. We got you. We appreciate you. We'll dig in you. there. We'll get in there and talk. We'll we'll clearly, we'll talk about whatever. <laughs> we'll talk whatever. about anything. <laughs> anything. <laughs> it doesn't matter. She's going to pull her subscription we'll after be okay. this episode. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just Never. Kidding. I hope not. I'm gonna I'm I'm lock it in. I don't know how I can <laughs> lock it in. Uh, I'm just playing for the lulls, but we're gonna continue on. Have a great rest of your day, whatever you're doing. Great rest of your night, wherever you're going. If you're going into work, going into school, going to sleep, washing the dishes, hit that shit. Keep going. We love y'all. Dreams come true. Keep going. They really do. They do. We'll see y'all on the other side. Peace. Rolling through the city to the light, y'all. Really ain't no telling where we might.